Who's that mother factor? It's you! Oh, damn it, I thought that mirror would work. Anyway, hey, hi there, welcome to this edition of 101 Facts. I'm Sam, and I'm here to talk to you today about the craze that's been on and off for years of capturing small animals and cramming them into balls and making them fight each other. Ah, oh, what a pastime. Yes, it's Pokemon! But which Pokemon can cause 481 million damage points in one move? Is it true that Pokemon's more popular than porn? Is the fact that a Magikarp evolves into a Gyarados a beautiful metaphor for how an utterly useless person can turn themselves into a big blue dragon if they try hard enough? Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so you better book yourself into a Pokemon Center pretty soon, because I'm going to fact beam you right in the face. This is 101 Facts About Pokemon. Number one. Those Pokemons first started out in 1996 with the release of video games for the original Nintendo Game Boy, which, if you're one of those young people, is a portable games console and not just a small lad who loves games. Soon after, the universe became extremely popular and expanded into trading cards, toys, anime, movies, and even a musical. <laughs> Number two. The word Pokemon is a combination amalgamation of the words pocket and monsters which refers to the original Japanese title, Pocket Monsters. Get it? Because they're monsters that fit in your pocket. Number three. Pokemon is the second most lucrative media franchise based on a video game ever, just behind everybody's favourite Italian plumber. No, I mean Mario. I've never even heard of that. Number four. 2016 marked the 20th anniversary of the release of the original video games, and was also marked by the release of the augmented reality app and what the entirety of my life is now taken up by, Pokemon Go. But more on that later. Number 5. Game Freak, the developer of the Pokemon games and not what your friend Gilbert puts as his Tinder bio, originated as a video game magazine in the early 1980s. Number 6. Mystical Pokemon Mew wasn't originally going to appear in the first Pokemon game at all, accessible only to certain Game Freak staff. Mew was added just two weeks before the original release of the game in Japan as just a prank, bro. Even Nintendo didn't know about it, and were no doubt very confused when players managed to glitch the game and encounter a Pokemon they'd never heard of. Number 7. The most successful Pokemon games were the original three, Pokemon Red, Blue and Green, for Japan, which all sold 23.64 million copies. Number 8. I bet with all this franchise success, Pikachu must be laughing all the way to the Pokemon Bank. In fact, the Pokemon Bank is a real thing, but it contains a far darker secret than money. The Pokemon Bank is a downloadable app for the Nintendo 3DS, which allows players to store up to 3,000 Pokemon from the games in some sort of prison on the cloud. Actually, it's it's not a prison. It's, it's probably quite nice in there. Number 9. Ash Ketchum is the main character of the Pokemon franchise. His English name is a pun of the English motto, Gotta Catch Em All. Because Ketchum and Catchem sound similar, get it? Sorry, I had to explain to my assistant Clive earlier, but he's a blithering idiot, so should have known you'd get it. Number 10. The Japanese name for Ash is Satoshi, just like Satoshi Tajiri, the creator of the Pokemon franchise. Hmm, what a coincidence. Number 11. The Japanese name for Gary Oak, grandson of Professor Oak, Ash's rival and all-round dickbag is Shigeru. Nothing weird about that until you realise it's just like Shigeru Miyamoto, the creator of Nintendo Super Mario and The Legend of Zelda. Hmm, harbouring a grudge there, are we? Number 12. Veronica Taylor was the original English voice for Ash in the original Pokemon anime, and she did a little bit of multitasking too, as she was the voice of Ash's mother. Number 13. Can anybody tell me what the first Pokemon Ash ever catches is? No? Ha! <laughs> Good try. No, it's a mere Caterpie in episode 3. Aww. Oh. Number 14. The relationship between Ash and Pikachu at the beginning of the series is a bit tense. In fact, the reason why Pikachu walks alongside them like some kind of dog while the other ones are relegated to Pokeballs is because Ash's Pikachu is a rebellious little sod and absolutely hates being inside his Pokeball. Number 15. 
There are more than 730 existing Pokemon species today. Each species has males and females, so that Gyarados you just called Gary could be a lady. I'd double check if I were you. Number 16. The concept of Pokemon, which consists of collecting as many species as possible, comes from Satoshi Tajiri's childhood hobby of collecting insects. He probably saw loads of Metapods hardening as a kid. Oh wait, that sounds weird. Number 17. Can you guess what the first Pokemon ever created was? All of those who said Bulbasaur or Pikachu, you may need to wash the incorrectness off yourselves. Because it was Rhydon. It also has the highest base attack stat of any Pokemon that isn't fully evolved. Rhydon, Rhydon. Number 18. There are 18 Pokemon types. Let's see if I can think of them on the top of my head. Hmm, okay, here we go. Fire, water, grass, electric, normal. That sounds kind of underwhelming. Fighting, ground, psychic, rock, dark, steel, ice, poison, flying bug, ghost, dragon, and fairy. Number 19. Pokeballs are used to capture wild Pokemon so you can have them for your own. Aww. Much like other balls, they used to be the size of golf balls when not used, and enlarges to the size of a baseball with just a touch. This, however, doesn't seem to be the case any longer. Number 20. Some Pokemon, such as Voltorb, Electrode, and Fungus, even resemble these balls. Be careful not to pick up a Voltorb or Electrode by mistake, though. You'll certainly get quite a shock. <laughs> shock. Number 21. Pokeballs are inspired by the balls of Gashapon machines. These little gizmos usually contain small handheld toys, a bit like a non-tasty Kinder Egg. Number 22! The Master Ball is the rarest of all Pokeballs in the land! <clears throat> Sorry. In Generation 1, the Master Ball had a 1 out of 65,536 chance of failing to capture the Pokemon. I like them odds. Number 23. A legendary Pokemon is different from other Pokemon in many ways. It's not a Pokemon who resembles Barney Stinson from How I Met Your Mother. They're also extremely difficult to capture, aren't part of any evolutionary chain, and cannot reproduce in the hedonistic sex dungeon that is the daycare center. Number 24. Oh right, I should say yes. The daycare center in the games, by the way, is where you leave Pokemon together to, to, to breed. Just so that reference doesn't sound, you know, as weird or like I should belong on a register. Anyway, look look at Pikachu. Number 25. This is Pikachu. Oh, look at him. He must be voiced by a little pixie child in real life, right? Wrong! 50-year-old Japanese actress Iku Otani is the voice of Pikachu. Number 26. Pikachu's name comes from Pika, the Japanese sound for electric sparks, and Chu, the Japanese word for squeak. The two came together to form his name and is now being used for chat-up lines the world over. Number 27. In 2008, Japanese researchers discovered a new protein that carries electrical impulses from the eyes to the brain. Well done to them, but double well done to them for calling it Pikachurin. Good work, guys. Number 28. In fact, according to legend, by which I mean promotional material, Pikachu can deliver a constant current of a thousand amps. Shocking. <laughs> oh, I've already used that joke. Number 29. Pikachu was even Japan's mascot for the FIFA World Cup in 2014. Number 30. Although many people think that Pokemon are just able to shout their name. Gotcha! Hold on. Wait, Hodor isn't a Pokemon. There are some cases of talking Pokemon, such as Meowth. All Pokemon can understand human language, so don't swear in front of them in case they pick it up. Number 31. A British woman named Lisa Courtney, and no, by the way, before you ask, I don't know her, Britain isn't that small, owns the world's largest collection of Pokemon memorabilia. She broke the world record in 2009 with a collection of 12,113 Pokemon items. Gotta catch them all, I guess. Number 32. She must have had some of, if not all, of these babies. Oh yes, 
The accessories to have on my playground when I was at school, the Pokemon trading card game first kicked off in 1996, but even now, 20 years later, there are still world championships of the game. If only the school bully hadn't stolen all of mine, I could win that. Damn you, Donald Dexter. Damn you to hell! Number 30. The Pokemon Illustrator card is considered the rarest in the world. In factuality, only 40 of them were ever distributed, and it sold on eBay for $100,000. Damn you, Donald Dexter! Number 34. The Christian Power Cards game was introduced in the UK in 1999 by theology student David Tate. The game was similar to the Pokemon card game, except instead of cute little monsters, it had not-so-cute biblical figures. Some parents were not happy with the Pokemon card game as it used the concept of Pokemon evolution against the biblical creation account in Genesis. Yeah, it was so realistic after them too, wasn't it? Number 35. Pokemon have had other controversies too. The Pokemon Jinx had to be redesigned after being accused of being a racial stereotype of African Americans due to its black skin and because of its resemblance to drag performers. Its skin was turned to purple instead. Number 36. The animal rights group PETA tried to ban Pokemon Black and White 2 in 2012, stating that the difference between real life and this fictional world of organised animal fighting is that Pokemon games paint a rosy picture of things that are actually horrible. Number 37. Electric Soldier Porygon is a Pokemon anime episode that featured a 12 second scene of Pikachu using electric shock and a missile inside a weird computer thing that caused the screen to flash blue and red rapidly. 635 Japanese children were admitted to hospitals with epileptic seizures after watching this episode in 1997 and it's never been shown since. I'm sure it's not that bad, let's give this a wa- oh. Number 38. Pokemon, with Poliwhirl taking centre stage for some reason, like the arrogant so-and-so he is, were on the cover of Time magazine in 1999. Along with the inscription, for many kids it's now an addiction. Is it bad for them? Well, it turns out yes if you don't like epilepsy. Number 39. A couple of Pokemon theme parks, or Poke Parks, were opened in Japan in 2005 and Taiwan in 2006. However, both were closed the same year they were opened because they weren't profitable enough. Oh, I guess with Pokemon Go now, the whole world is a Poke Park. More on that later. Number 40. The 18th episode of the Pokemon anime Beauty and the Beach first aired in Japan in 1997, but was banned outside of Asia because of a scene in which James wears inflatable breasts to win a beauty contest. <laughs> I'm not sure why that's so controversial. We've all done that. R right? Everyone? Number 41. There was a rejected Pokemon whose design was based on Dolly, the first cloned sheep. This was abandoned because it was judged too controversial for Pokemon. Anyway, a bit later, along came Mareep, so they clearly weren't that worried. The meaning of life. In early 2016, Nintendo revealed footage of new Pokemon featured in the game Pokemon Sun and Moon, including a fella by the name of Young Goose. Although nothing's proven yet, many fans think he's a caricature of Donald Trump. I mean, I see the resemblance, but the only way we'll know is if feces leave his mouth when he opens it. Number 43! The 680th episode of the Pokemon anime was originally scheduled to air in Japan on March 17th, 2011, but it was delayed because of the Fukushima nuclear disaster. Number 44. Pokemon is so popular they even pop up in other shows that aren't theirs. Pikachu actually appears in The Simpsons a couple of times and looks like this. Is it just me or does he look really evil? Number 45. Girafarig is a palindrome, which doesn't mean a weird futuristic soldier, although that's what it sounds like. It just means the word is the same backwards as it is forwards. Its Pokemon palindrome brethren include Alomomola, Eevee and Ho-Oh. Number 46. The anime episode The Legendary Dratini was banned in the US because there were too many guns shown in the episode. The US saying no to guns? That's new. Number 47. Niue, the world's smallest independent nation, have coins with Pikachu on them as its currency. That sounds great! And look at it! Let's all move there and turn it into Mother Factor Island. 
Start the hashtag now. Also, follow us on Twitter. Number 48. Azuril is a special little Pokemon as it's the only Pokemon that can change sex when it wants. When a female Azuril evolves, there is a 1 in 3 chance it will change into a male Marrow. Thanks David Attenborough for reading that fact out. What do you mean it was definitely not him? Number 49. All Spinder Pokemon are different, like the unique special snowflake that you are. C cupcake. In fact, the chances of them being exactly identical are 1 in 4,294,967,295. Exactly the same likelihood as Jennifer Lawrence accepting my various marriage proposals. Number 50. Satoshi Tajiri is the creator of this whole Pokemon shebang, and his favourite Pokemon ever is... Uh, Poliwag. Didn't expect that, did ya? Number 51. Poliwag is a Pokemon based on a tadpole. The spiral pattern on its belly represents the intestines of tadpoles that can sometimes be seen through their transparent body. Maybe uh, Satoshi just loves intestines? Everyone needs a hobby. Number 52. Fighting type Hitmonchan's name is a reference to Jackie Chan. Hitmon Lee's name is a reference to Bruce Lee. Hitmon Top doesn't refer to anyone famous, I don't think. A carrot top, maybe? Number 53. Ekans is a snake, that's why I did that S noise there. But it's also snake spelled backwards. Its evolution, Arbok, is Cobra, with a K, spelt backwards. Liumas is Samuel, spelt backwards. Not relevant to Pokemon, but just good to know. Number 54. The Kanto region is a real place. Okay, it doesn't have Pokemon in it, so put your balls away. And those ones too. But it's the only region of the Pokemon world that shares its name with the real world Japanese region it is based on. Number 55. All core series professors are named after types of trees. You've got Professor Oak, Professor Elm, Professor Birch, Professor Rowan, Professor Groot. Well, he's not a professor yet, but he bloody should be. He's tremendously wise. Number 56. Although Spinarak looks pretty much like a spider, it's not a spider since it only has six legs. Wait, so if it's not a spider, then what's its string shot made out of? Oh, I dread to think. Number 57! <laughs> because it has nine tails, most people misspell nine tails and think its name is nine tails. Silly people for thinking that nine tails, which has nine tails, is spelt nine tails. Ow, my brain hurts. Number 58! Duh. One Pokemon is said to be inspired by the Bible, and it's this little springy piggy fella. Yes, it's said that Spoink's design was inspired by the biblical phrase, Neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Number 59. While some can be biblical, some Pokemon have tragic stories behind them, such as this guy, Cubone. Cubone wears the skull of its dead mother as a helmet. Well, at least it recycles. Number 60. Pokemon Sun and Moon will feature this Pokemon, who looks a little familiar, don't you think? Well, Mimikyu is actually a ghost-type Pokemon who is wearing a Pikachu costume, because it wants to be as cute and beloved as Pikachu. Oh, that's cute. But is it me, or does he look really creepy? You know, like that sack kid from the orphanage. Number 61. The majority of Pokemon are omnivorous, although some of them can eat things such as minerals, electricity, or even dreams. Number 62. In fact, Drowsy is based on the Japanese myth of the tapir, a creature that is said to eat bad dreams of sleeping people. Oh, um, thanks Drowsy for leaving me with the sweet, sweet dreams of me and J-Law growing old together. <sighs> Number 63. Sunken, this strange little Bart Simpson Cress hybrid, is the weakest Pokemon around. Yep, that's right, Magic Carpet. Ain't you, little fella or lady? Sunken has the lowest base stat total of all Pokemon, with just a total of 180 points. Nintendo 64. 
Articuno, Zapdos and Moltres are the legendary birds of the original 150. If you look carefully though, they can teach you basic Spanish. Mm. The last part of each of their names are 1, 2 and 3 in Spanish. How incredibly useful for ordering tapas. Number 65. Mew was the first Pokemon trademark ever applied for. In fact, it was applied for way back in 1990, whereas the word Pokemon itself wasn't trademarked until 1995. Number 66. The highest possible damage that can be dealt in the games in one move through a series of stat boosters and special circumstances is an absolutely insane 481,266,036 points. One fearsome Pokemon and one fearsome Pokemon alone can deal this amount of damage with one move, and it's... Chuckle? Really? Wow. Number 67. The least common Pokemon type is Ghost, with only 4.16% of all Pokemon being ghostly creatures. Number 68. The most common Pokemon type is Water, with 16.8% of all Pokemon making Squirtle even more of a basic bitch. Sorry, pal, it's just science. Number 69. There have been 19 full-length Pokemon feature films, from the imaginatively titled Pokemon the First Movie, to Volcanion and the exquisite Magirna. What a catchy name. Number 70. Gold and Silver were considered the last Pokemon games when they were developed, but the success of the game made Nintendo change its mind and go for Gold. By making more games after Gold. Sorry, I even confused myself there. Number 71. Coughing and Weezing, the two famous Poison-type Pokemon who are known for causing a lot of both coughing and wheezing, were originally going to be named Nye and La, after New York and Los Angeles, two of America's most polluted cities. Oh, political. Number 72. It's been 18 years since the release of the first episode of the Pokemon TV series, and somehow Ash is still 10 years old. Number 73. Ash may be young, but even after that time, he still has never passed the semi finals of the Pokemon League. Oh, will he ever get to nationals? Oh, no way, that's, that's glee. Number 74. Humans apparently do eat Pokemon, the monsters. Some episodes of the anime and the game feature characters eating Pokemon, or at least making reference to it. Ash and Brock even fantasise eating a cooked Magikarp when trapped on a desert island. Apparently you can't eat one, FYI. Arcanine's descriptions state it's a legendary Pokemon, despite the fact that Arcanine is not legendary in any way in comparison to Zapdos and Co. Number 76. There are only 37 different Pokemon cries in red, blue, and green, despite there being 151 different Pokemon. Number 77. Solgaleo and Lunala are the legendary game mascots of Pokemon Sun and Moon. Solgaleo is a combination of Sol, which is Latin for Sun, and Leo, Leonardo DiCaprio. I'm joking, sorry, I mean Latin for Lion. Lunala is a combination of Luna, which is Latin for the Moon, and Arla, which is Latin for Wing. Number 78. Pokemon Sun and Moon are the first Pokemon games to be released in Chinese. And I'm sure you're tremendously grateful for it, aren't you, China? Yeah, I thought so. Number 79. Most of the development of the Red and Blue games was made by a team of just nine members. Number 80. The development of the Red and Green games started in 1900, making it incubation period, if you like, the longest out of any of them at 96 years. Sorry, wait, 1990, I mean, just, just six years. My bad. Number 81. Mareep, the electrical type sheep-like Pokemon, is an anagram of Ampere, which is the measure of electrical current. I see what they did there. Number 82. Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire have villainous teams, Magma and Aqua generally bothering the populace in matching uniforms. The ultimate goal of Team Magma is to expand the amount of landmass in the world by awaking Groudon, the legendary Pokemon who can increase landmass. Number 83. The ultimate goal of Team Aqua is to expand the amount of water in the world by awakening Kyogre, 
who can expand oceans, apparently, so it must be bloody useful on holiday if the beach is too busy. Number 84. The tallest Pokemon you can possibly have is Waylord, who is 14.5 meters tall. Must be a real squeeze in that Pokeball for him. Number 85. Pichu may well have the lowest base stat total of all electric type Pokemon, but that doesn't matter because it's game director Junichi Basuda's favorite Pokemon ever. Oh. Number 86. If you want X-rated nicknames for your cute little creatures, you may need to invest in fish instead rather than Pokemon. Sex-related offensive or just plain fun words are now banned from being used as Pokemon nicknames. In fact, since Generation 5, you can't name your Pokemon Nazi, Bitch, or F*** or T*** or the C or the None of those. Number 87. Team Rocket are, as we all know, nasty but seemingly immortal bastards. I mean, how many times can they survive falling from an absolutely massive height? Anyway, their motto is, steal Pokemon for profit, exploit Pokemon for profit, all Pokemon exist for the glory of Team Rocket. Which kind of rhymes. Number 88. Even though this guy is officially named Mr. Mime, it can still be a female lady Pokemon. Huh? Number 89. In the 1996 games, the player could cut down a tree, save, restart, and end up on top of said tree. <laughs> I mean, that gives you no advantage whatsoever, but still, what, what great fun. Number 90? Parasect is a crab-like Pokemon that has been completely overtaken by the parasitic mushroom on its back. Parasitic mushrooms in video games. Where have I heard that before? Oh god. Oh god, Ash, get out of there! Number 91. Anyway, unless you've been living under a rock, in which case you must be in a lot of pain, go to hospital. You'll have heard that Pokemon Go took the world by bloody storm when it was released in July 2016. Number 92. Pokemon Go represents a turning point in Nintendo's strategy, who first refused to develop the game for smartphones. They were probably right, I mean, smartphones are never going to take off, are they? A week after the release of the game, Nintendo's shares were up more than 50%. Number 93. John Hankey, the entrepreneur who created Keyhole, which later became the basis of Google Earth, also founded Niantic, the company that developed Pokemon Go. Number 94. The Pokemon Go game has been downloaded more times than Tinder within its first week. So there you go. Going out there and catching Krabbies has now been replaced by intentionally going out there and catching Krabbies. It also was more popular than porn on Google. Porn's probably won that battle though. Number 95. Pokemon Go players were able to meddle with their GPS location so that the game thinks they are actually somewhere else in order to catch rare Pokemon. The app responded by banning those naughty, devious little players from minutes to several hours. Number 96. At the beginning of Pokemon Go, three Pokemon appear to you, Charmander, Bulbasaur and Squirtle. If you don't pick one straight away and keep ignoring them, Pikachu will eventually appear to you and you can have him at kickoff. Number 97. Pokemon Go's random placement of Pokemon in the real world has caused some pretty negative effects. In fact, a reporter at a state briefing in the US was recently caught by spokesperson John Kirby playing the game while he was reading a report. Number 98. One man named Michael Baker got stabbed while searching for Pokemon. However, he refused to get treatment so he could carry on playing and finish his search. Wow, nothing could keep a good trainer down, eh? Though, as a rule, if you do get stabbed, you should probably stop whatever you're doing. Number 99. One of the worst incidents was when someone found a coughing while in the Auschwitz Museum. Oh god, that's awful. Hey, wait, why would you even play Pokemon Go there? Number 100. Also, hey, 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 don't play Pokemon Go and drive. Some people have been, and it's, it's really silly. It's caused accidents and all sorts. And don't play it while watching this video either. I, ah, we're near the end anyway. Have a quick check. Go on, I won't mind. I'll wait. You got anything good? Number 101! A man in New Zealand named Tom Curry became the first full-time Pokemon hunter. 
He quit his job in Auckland to explore the whole island in order to catch them all. Well, we at 101 Facts salute you, Tom Curry. We salute you. Mm, that was 101 facts about Pokemon, and I don't know about you, but I had a bloody lovely time. If you want more 101 fact videos like Pikachu really wants more ketchup, then click on subscribe right now and you will get exactly that. I just spat everywhere. Ooh. Ooh, exciting.